welcome to another walk in the spirit come with me as we have another walk now we are at a repeat location but i think i've only been here in winter this is that place i discovered on christmas eve on the other side of the river and came three days later after christmas and came here i think i did three videos in winter here uh, i have not recorded here during spring or summer that i can remember all right today is going to be a very interesting video uh, i'm going to title this uh we are in the last hour and this is going to be a small collaboration with uh my brother and friend kevin huckman he's going to be doing a video i'll link to in a bit on the feast of trumpets folks we are in i believe the last hour I'm going to go through some scriptures and go over what we've gone through the last three years. Um, really, what I'm going to share today is nothing new. I'm just putting it all together. We're just going to look back at all, back at all what we've went through. And there is some news. news. Uh, I guess I'll start with the new news. Um, about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, somewhere in there, I'd say somewhere between five to ten days ago, there's a channel I watch on YouTube called um, Watchmen with Eric. I'll put his name on the screen and I'll link to it down below. If I have room, I'll link to it here, but I don't think I'll have room. And he had some news. Here's a pond here. Let's just do a spin. He had some news about Israel and Russia. And now I didn't run with it. Well, one, because I was on vacation. But it was quite important. I still could have ran with it. And I didn't because I wanted confirmation. Usually my uh, information I use and run with is from Amir from Behold Israel. Well, Amir confirmed it yesterday. But Eric had a video. Uh, it's about 12 minutes long. It's usually about the length of his videos. About how um, Russia is no longer working with Israel when Israel decides to make strikes, military strikes, in Syria. So you see the last, I don't know how many years, uh, Amir mentioned the years um, in his video yesterday. And I guess I will link to Amir's video. And you can find that video here, okay, where he goes into more detail. But... Putin has been friends with Benjamin Netanyahu. And anytime Israel has needed to do military strikes in Syria, they contact Russia and ahead of time so that they can move their troops and their equipment so none of that gets hit. I think this is a dead end. We'll see. And Russia and Israel have had that peace and that collaboration. Collaboration. Now, just like Trump, oh, bug in my eye, Benjamin Netanyahu finally lost his elections. They went through like three sets of elections in like a year and a half or something like that. And he's no longer in authority. Well, Again, four, five, six days ago, Israel sent some missiles into Syria and Russia took some of them out. Now, I didn't run with this because, again, I wanted confirmation from Amir. Amir confirmed it and he talked about it in his Middle East update. And he hasn't done one in a few weeks because he's been in America for like three weeks, something like that. Please see that link and he'll give you a lot more information on the details between uh, Russia and Israel. By the way, it is a little windy, so the camera a little bit closer. It's like 10, 11 miles an hour wind. Uh, but it is a beautiful day. This is the kind of summer weather I like. It's like 71, 72 at the most, somewhere in there. Maybe even 70. So it's not too hot and it's like midday. I usually don't come out, right, this time of the day. So anyways, Israel no longer has uh, collaboration with Russia and Amir's talking about this is the next step towards Ezekiel 38 war and I agree 
okay? Now, Israel, according to Amir, they're, they're in, uh, Kevin asked me, do you think that's going to, to hamper Israel's desire to do military work in Syria? According to, to what I understand, what Amir said, no, they're going to continue to do it, but they're going to do it without Russia's permission. So it's only going to be so long before Russian interests will be, get hit, which will probably lead to Isaiah 17.1 or something in there, all right? Amir also hinted at, because there's a couple days, maybe it's one or two days, a year ago, from the anniversary in a couple, two days, a year ago, that city in Lebanon was, a third of it was destroyed by that explosion, okay? Well, Amir was sharing that secret documents have been leaked out that only one-fifth of the chemical compound, I forget the name of it, again, watch, uh, the frog just went by, watch his video for, for full details, the chemical compound that used for explosions, only one-fifth of it blew up and took out a third of the city. Four-fifths is still missing, and he alluded to, well, what if that four-fifths of that chemical compound is in Damascus, because they don't know where it is. And that could easily blow up Damascus, but we just don't know what's going to destroy Damascus. Again, I'm referring to Isaiah 17.1. Folks, I believe, I shared this before, that this fall on the Feast of Trumpets, I believe the Antichrist will confirm a deal with Israel and start the tribulation. This fall, I believe, I can't say with certainty, obviously not, okay? This fall, I believe, will start the tribulation. Now this here is an osprey nest. Now I was here actually this, I was here this spring, this summer, but I didn't come with a camera with my son. And we did see the baby osprey off in a distance, okay? And that's the information on the osprey. The hour is late, folks. Now, Kevin and I are, are good friends, but we don't agree on everything. But who does, right? Is there anybody you agree with completely on all issues? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. But you can still be good friends and still agree on many things. He and I both will tell you we're not certain on the rapture of any day or year, but we believe that Jesus told us God told us to watch and he gave us things to watch for I think we are in the season he thinks we're in the season I would agree that I think he would believe that this year something significant prophetically is going to happen not probably the rapture I believe the rapture is imminent so all the things we're going through towards we went through and all the things we're seeing is pointing us towards this conclusion that the rapture is near and i'm gonna go over some of the things that we went through uh, in these last three years and i shared these things in previous videos the video i'm speaking mostly about is my beginning of sorrows revisited video and you can find that video here now that was a redone one i actually did another one prior to that but it was not good quality i've been doing better quality videos had more information more revelation so I made a newer one so let's go ahead and pull out Matthew 24 and we're gonna go over the beginning of sorrows scriptures and go over some of the things that we have seen take place in the last three years I'm kind of delaying it because I want to do a backdrop over here of a nice area I think is coming up this is a conservancy that we're in Oh, nothing too spectacular, but nonetheless, I will use this as my backdrop. All right, so we're going to go to Matthew 24 and read like three verses there and go over them. 
bugs are here. But I did spray. Matthew 24, verses 6 through 8, I believe describes the season we're in called the beginning of sorrows. The time period right before the tribulation. Please see my video on that for more. Matthew 24, 5. Oh, 6. 20, 24, verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these th things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So let's talk a little bit about this before I read the next verse. Wars and rumors of wars. Now, if you remember, we've had some of these rumors of wars. We had the small crisis with Korea testing their missiles while Trump was still in office. And there was more frogs, like three of them I've seen now. So we've had rumors of possible war with Korea. Uh, Trump got them to back down, praise God. We've had, we've had, sorry, I'm confused in where I'm at. I just realized where I am. Going the right way I want to go. We've had confrontations with Russia, okay? Not as intense, but there was a time in, when some of their troops and some of our troops actually got into battle, but their troops weren't literally Russian army. They were mercenaries. So Russia didn't have to defend them uh, for national pride. So that de-escalated. Here's the river. It was on the other side of that river that I saw these trails, particularly up ahead. And we've had situations with China getting intense rumors of wars and of course there have been battles and real wars in the last three years nothing you know super large scale but there has been wars uh, with the rumors of wars in the last three years all right let me get to this other spot up here I'm actually going to do this in the Sun this time and I'm only going to read one verse This is the spot, because in the winter, all the leaves are gone. And I was on the other side of the river on, on a trail that I've done many videos at. And I saw this bench. I saw this sign. That was when I was doing my Christmas video on Christmas Eve. And I saw this place. So let's uh, read the next verse in Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 7. And you will hear, oh, that's 6, 7. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. And na for nation will rise against nation. Now, I did a video. It may have been, I always forget which one it was, it may have been the beginning of Sorrow's video where I stated, where it says nation will rise against nation, in the Greek, that is the word ethnos. Ethnos will rise against ethnos. And that is where we get the English word ethnic. And I said, there will be ethnic divisions. And it was the following Friday that, the George, that George Floyd was killed. And then I think, well, ma'am, it was either the following Friday he was killed or it was the following Friday where the riots began. But it all happened within one week after I put that video up. And we have seen ethnic tensions rising in America and in the world. And I've discussed it before. I've had a video on it just on that subject alone ethnic divisions and lawlessness and you can find that video here we have seen it grow folks <laughs> this is gonna be an excellent video for those who do not believe we are in the times end times the things that the scripture says concerning the beginning of sorrows have happened this is a historic tree it is more than 100 years old this is a burr oak it is one of the oldest burr oaks 
in Wisconsin. And the mosquitoes are bad here. <laughs> I think that's another bur oak over there. But that tree is huge. So we've seen this happen. And in that video, I also talk about lawlessness in general. Now in these verses I've just been reading in Matthew 24, it doesn't talk about lawlessness. I'll put the verse on the screen. There is another verse that talks about lawlessness will increase in the end times. I'll put up that verse. And I'm not going to go deep into it, see that other video for more. But the Antichrist, one of his names is the man of lawlessness. Okay? When, that, when the tribulation starts, which I believe is more than likely going to happen at the Feast of Trumpets, that's when the tribulation will begin. And the man of lawlessness will come onto the scene. All right, what is the next thing that was in there? Twenty-four. Kingdom versus kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences. We've been hearing, I've been hearing, rumors of famines for the last three years. I, in that video, my, uh, this is getting muddy. I think I'm going to turn, well, let's see. I may have to turn around. In that video, I shared how so much farmland, oh, I made it through. So much farmland in the United States did not get planted, I think it was in 2017 or 2018. And we keep having these problems. And now, right now, uh, the farmlands are actually producing, but there is an issue because there's not enough employee employees to bring about shipping the goods to stores. It's not a bad yet, but reports are saying it can get bad really, really soon. So there is the threat of famine. And, and if you've been watching other news sources, we've had plagues of locusts in the Middle East and other countries destroying crops. Famine is happening in this world. We also have a famine in this country, in some areas, because of the severe droughts. The severe droughts are bad. Let's go in here. Oh, and so the mosquitoes are really bad. <laughs> the droughts are really bad in many places, and we're having fires all over the United States. Uh, Amir was talking about fires in other places in the world in that same video I pointed towards, okay? And, of course, we have the word pestilences, which we read. I don't know if this is a trail. I'm going to turn around. Pestilences, okay? Now, that could point towards, you know, bugs eating crops, but it also points towards sicknesses, diseases, it pointed towards the pandemic. We had the pandemic, folks. It's right there. That is pestilence, okay? And I have a video on that, and you can find that video here, where I talk about uh, pandemics and diseases concerning uh, the last days, and there's more coming after the tribulation starts. It's a sign of the times. It's happened. It's happened. And what else was there? Let's go back to Matthew 24. Earthquakes. We just had a big one, folks, uh, within the last week also. 8.1, 8.2 near Alaska. I saw one report saying it was the biggest one possibly in the last 50 years. And like in, uh, in, in our continent or something like that. A lot of big earthquakes, and we've been having them, okay? It's a sign of the times. There's other signs of the time, folks, not written in Matthew 24. We've had cancel culture. 
The division between left and the right, conservatives and liberals, is intense. Cities burning, okay? Mostly, partially due to ethnic divisions, but other things. Antifa, things like that. Folks, for it to be worse, it has to be the tribulation, okay? When the rapture happens, the salt will be gone. The left, the wicked, will be unhindered. We have the situation in the Middle East with Russia, Turkey, Iran, all in Syria, the three biggest countries that will be involved in the Ezekiel 38 war. To see my video on the Ezekiel 38 war, you can find that video here. Now, let me share again. I don't know the order of these events. We have three events that I believe are going to happen next. The order of them, I don't know. We have the rapture, we have Isaiah 17, 1, the destruction of Damascus, the capital of Syria, and we have the Ezekiel 38 war. In my opinion only, and it could be switched around, I have no issue with that. Rapture, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38 war in that order, and then after the Ezekiel 38 war, the Antichrist will come out of the scene and confirm a covenant with Israel and other nations. And I believe that's going to happen this fall on the Feast of Trumpets. Now, when is the Feast of Trumpets? I am not an expert. I asked my brother Kevin if he would do a video on it. He said he would. So I'm going to point to a video that's probably being created now. I have not seen it. And you can find Kevin's video here. Kevin Huckman. Okay. He's going to have a video telling you when the Feast of Trumpets is going to happen. We have the one that's on the calendar, the one they will most likely celebrate, and then there is the issue of, is the calendar correct? You see, Israel has a different calendar than us, and I'm not an expert on it, okay? They don't have leap years and leap days. They, I believe they have 30 days each month, and every so many years, if the harvest, a certain harvest, isn't happening on a certain day, they add an extra month, like a leap month. And that changes their calendar, but they're not always faithful in doing it these days. Therefore, the Feast of Trumpets may be later than what they're going to celebrate on, and Kevin will talk about that in that video. Now, I did do a video on the Feast of Trumpets. I believe it was my very first Table in the Wilderness video. And if I have room, you can find that link here, where I discuss what I believe is going to the significance of the Feast of Trumpets. There is a small group of Christians, I won't say they're small, but they're small in percentage-wise, that believes the rapture has to happen on the Feast of Trumpets. Kevin stands in that belief, although he is not solid on it, he may say it could happen another time. I don't believe it will happen on, I believe it will happen on any day. Since the Feast of Trumpets isn't any day, it could happen on the Feast of Trumpets. But I believe, as I explained in that video, watch it for more, that the Feast of Trumpets is going to be the day the Antichrist will confirm a covenant, and seven years later will be the day that Jesus returns on. Okay? This is a minor issue that Kevin and I disagree with, but it's a minor issue. Okay? And neither of us is going to say with any certainty what day Jesus comes back at. However, I am fairly convinced the rapture will happen before the Feast of Trumpets, which I believe is in October. See Kevin's video. He'll discuss that. So before then, we have to have the Ezekiel 38 war, which I think will cause Daniel 9.27, which is the Antichrist confirming the covenant. And before Ezekiel 38, I think there's going to be something that causes the Ezekiel 38 war to happen, which is Isaiah 17.1. And I also believe that the rapture will happen before this. Again, these things might be in different order, but that is what I believe the order is going to take place. In other words, things are coming down. I believe we're in the last hour, folks. 
enough on these events. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, be ready. How do you be ready? Parable of the ten virgins, five had extra oil, five did not. Those who had the extra oil were taken. The five who did not have extra oil were not taken. The extra oil is being born again. Okay, there's a difference between believing versus being born again. All ten virgins were Christians, but only five, half of them, were raptured. Half the church won't be raptured, folks. You need to be born again. What is being born again? Galatians 2.20 For I have been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. I put the verse on the screen. I didn't quote it perfectly, and I didn't quote all of it. It's time to be born again. Realizing that you died with Christ on that cross. Two works of the cross. You believe Jesus died for your sins. The first work of the cross, you're saved. You have eternal life. The second work of the cross, you died with him. You are born again. You have the extra oil. And you are rapture ready. That's it, folks. So say a prayer with me. While well, time is short, do not delay. If you believe in Jesus, you are saved. Maybe you don't even believe. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing it. So let's pray for your salvation and pray for you being born again. Pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in your two works of the cross. I believe you died on the cross for me. You took the payment of my sins. I receive the forgiveness of my sins for your shedding of your blood and dying on the cross for me. But I also believe, Lord Jesus, that I died on the cross with you. Galatians 2.20 I accept that newness of life. I put off the old man, I put on the new man. And I accept that I am a new creature in you. It is no longer I who live, but it is you who lives in me. Amen. That's the start, folks. Okay? It's a renewal process as you grow in Christ. But if you're born again and you believe that, you should have that extra oil. And now it's time to repent of your sins. We don't want anything hindering you from entering the kingdom of God or being raptured. Because you can be born again. Paul said to those in Galatia, I believe, I have doubt of you. I may have to birth you again. I'll put the verse on the screen. I won't read it. If you are born again, but you living in sin and not repenting, you're not walking in that newness of life and you may not be raptured. You need to walk in repentance. I'm not saying to be sin free because John said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're gonna fall. But we're not going to live down there. We're going to get up, confess our sins to Christ, confess that we are new creatures in Christ, get up and walk in Him. That's it, folks. Time is short. The rapture is imminent. I believe it will happen before October. I could be wrong. We may have another year. But I am heavily leaning on the reasons I've not discussed in this video that this has to be the year, folks because of the age of Israel. See my other videos for more. That's it, folks. That will conclude my walk in the spirit today. Please take the time seriously. Please take what I'm sharing today seriously. It won't harm you. If he delays, that's okay. More times for people to get saved. But don't put it off. Don't put it off. We'll see you again, Lord willing, if we're not raptured, if I'm not censored, God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.